A 15-inch powered home theater subwoofer for under $300. Sounds very interesting, right? Well, there's only one problem. Could it be? They're just plain out lying to you. I recently tested the Rockville Rock Shaker 15 inch home theater subwoofer and you guys provided me the feedback saying, hey, we want you to try some other budget 15 inch home theater subwoofer. So today I decided to get the Dayton Audio Sub 1500, which is a 15 inch 150 watt powered subwoofer. And as always, we're gonna open the box from the bottom because that's how the real G's do it. And let's slide this subwoofer out of the package here and take a closer look and see what it's all about. And here we see it includes, of course, the subwoofer with a grill on the front. Also, we get some literature from Dayton Audio showing some of the other products that they make. And we get the owner's manual for the Sub 1500. As for dimensions, it's nearly a cube, 19 and 3 fourths inches deep, 19 and 3 fourths inches high by 19 and 1 fourth inches wide and tips the scale at 56 pounds. Now, as far as price goes, when I purchased mine, it was $260, but it looks like Trumponomics, Bidenomics, whatever you want to call it, inflation, $309 now at the time of this video. As previously mentioned, this front grill is removable. And once we pull it off, we can see here, it does have some Velcro, which helps hold down the grill to the enclosure. Now, speaking of the enclosure again, this is a large subwoofer. It's a 15 inch subwoofer, a little bit of perspective off here for the picture, but still 15 inch is large for a home theater subwoofer. But what about some of the other features and specs? Well, it's enormous 15 inch heavy duty long throw woofer, 150 watt amplifier with selectable auto on feature, down firing flared port design for clean, powerful bass, perfect for large home theater rooms, unobtrusive texture black vinyl finish cabinet with a removable grill, Frequency response, 23 hertz to 140 hertz, and weight, 56 pounds. And as with most powered home theater subwoofers, this one has a plate amplifier on the back. And we're going to look at each of the individual features of this particular plate, starting with this little selector here for phase, 0 or 180 degrees. Also beside that, or under that, we have the power, which allows you to do on, auto, or off. And then we have the gain or volume control from minimum to maximum. Then we have high level output. That's right. You can do speaker level inputs and then pass them through to the uh, other speakers. It has a low pass crossover from 40 hertz to 160 hertz. Also, we have line level inputs for stereo or mono RCA. And then below that, we have the high level input. In case you don't have RCAs, just have speaker level inputs. And below that, we have an attached power cord. 125 volt, 60 hertz is what they say here. So this one's not multifunction like the rock bill that could do variable frequencies and variable voltages. And again, this one's attached is about five feet, four inches in length. And you can see here on the bottom, we do have a flared port as we do the spin about here to show you what its subwoofer looks like laying on its side. Now, after running the subwoofer for about a solid day, letting it break in with various types of music. We hook it up here so we can try it out with some bass heavy music to see how it performs by hooking up the RCAs and turning the power switch to on. So here we go, get your headphones ready. Let's try some bass music and see how it plays. So I know it's gonna be impossible over video here for you to grasp how this thing sounds. And it sounded okay, but I could tell it did not seem to be as powerful as the Rockville. Remember the Rockville sub was rated 600 watts and only did 150 RMS. The other thing is when I did some music using the different frequency tones, it completely disappeared at 30 Hertz. I didn't hear anything, but I also did some Metallica here and I'll leave a link below to this uh, live concert, which is awesome. It sounded okay with this, but not super good. And Hell Freezes Over, of course, from Eagles, one of my favorite concert videos ever. Again, the bass sounded okay, but it did just didn't blow me away. Next up, I put it in the theater so we could try some different movies. 
Of course, my favorite ones are Jurassic Park, Tron Legacy, Top Gun Maverick, and Terminator 2 Judgment Day. So we did clips from each one, including the segment of Jurassic Park, where the T-Rex is thumping around, everything is shaking. This one sounded pretty good. It kind of shook the room a little bit. We got the Terminator 2. Of course, there's a lot of heavy action in Terminator 2, and the sounds, the explosions, everything sounded good in the room. Of course, Top Gun Maverick uh, looked like D is flying the plane here. I don't know who did this, but it looks pretty good. Sound quality, again, was good. I'd heard a lot of room-shaking noises from the sub, kind of as you would expect. And Tron Legacy, around 41 minutes in the movie when they get on the light cycles. This is one of my favorite segments. It was awesome. But I do think The Rockville actually did a little better, in my opinion, on those segments. But we did decide, let's go ahead and get this amplifier out. Let's try it on the amp down and find out how much power it does. And you'll see here, we're going to do the wattage, the ohm load. But the voltage, you can ignore that because we are have we do have it plugged into the wall. We're just using the battery bank for the amp dyno. Now at 8 ohms, we're not sure what this amp board is rated. But we're going to try it out here. And we actually have the oscilloscope so you guys can see that as well. At 8 ohms, we got 44 watts. And that got me really thinking. If it does 44 watts at 8 ohms, is it really going to do 150 at 4 ohms? I guess we'll just have to wait and see. Dynamically sends a pulse track of 40 hertz into the amp. And there you can see 54 watts dynamically at 8 ohms. So really interesting here. Let's try 4 ohms. Again, amplifier is rated 150 watts RMS. Let's try it. Certified to 1% distortion. What do we get? Oh no, 67 watts. That is less than half of what it's rated. Let's try it up to the clipping point though. Surely we'll get better. Let's see what we get here. Up to the clipping point, 40 hertz is the track, 74 watts, so literally half of what the amplifier is rated. Next up, we're gonna send the dynamic pulse track into the amp. See what we get here. We're closing in on 100 watts, we're getting 88 watts at four ohms dynamically. Now I'm a little shocked here from Dayton Audio and Parts Express that they well overrated this amp that doesn't even seem to be that high rated, but we will test it down to 2.6 ohms if you watch all the way to the end of the video. But I did some further research and found out Dayton Audio used to make the SA70 70 watt amplifier, which is now discontinued. And so when I checked the specs that they had on this on their website, I did notice something very interesting. Their ratings of this is 45 watts at 8 ohms, 70 watts at 4 ohms, which is nearly identical to what I got. So is this really a 70 watt plate amplifier? What's up with that, PE? This is not a Mickey Mouse program. You guys must understand, I don't set out to find these things. I literally just test things to see what they do. And when things are massively overrated like the Rockville, that's obviously you know, tongue in cheek to begin with, but a company like Parts Express State and Audio did not expect them to overrate this subwoofer plate amplifier. So is it possible that this is supposed to include a different plate amp and the one that I got included the wrong one? I don't know. I guess it is a possibility. But anyway, let's remove the plate amplifier here from the back of the enclosure and take a closer look at it and see what it's all about. Here we can see the attached power cord Five foot four inches or 162 centimeters is the length. Again, it's attached. You cannot remove it like on the Rockville. Also, we have 3300 microfarad capacitors here, which are 50 volts. These are for the amplifier rails. This is a class AB amp. And also we have an 80 watt transformer. What I use for the toroidal coil. Now I'm no electronics engineer, but an 80 watt transformer is probably not going to generate 150 watts RMS of output power. Just saying. Now here we have the internals of the cabinet, which you can see the flare port here. Also, you can see the 15 inch powered sub. You can also see some damping material there on the side of the box, which is pretty cool. Now let's take out the subwoofer here so we can take a closer look at it and see what it's all about. We we'll have to tip it over so we can get the sub out. It did use wood screws, whereas the Rockville used threaded inserts, which I prefer. Here you can see 3.9 ohms of resistance and the model number W15407B, which when I did a search for these, these closed out a few years ago for $60 on the Parts Express site. And the features included 150 watts RMS, 300 max handling, 4 ohms, frequency response 30 hertz to 600 hertz, sensitivity 92 dB, Voice coil diameter 2.25 inches, 
Also, resonant frequency of 34.5 hertz. Non-pressed paper cone and inverted dust cap for a sleek look and minimum resonance. Oversized foam surround and bump back plate for high excursion. Vented pole piece keeps voice cool cool for high power and low power compression. And I couldn't have said it any better myself because I was basically reading that from the specifications that Parts Express provided. And this is nonsense. Not the specs provided, of course, but the nonstop dad jokes. Anyway, let's get back to the electric hand, the subwoofer enclosure. Now we did some measurements and found out this was about 2.75 cubic feet of airspace, 77.9 liters, which is quite a bit less than Parts Express recommends. When we look at the subwoofer, it says it wants around 12 cubic feet for ported enclosure. So this is really an infinite baffle style subwoofer, a re relatively small enclosure. It is what it is. But here you can see we have a three inch flared port which is approximately seven inches in length. Now let's move on to the pros and cons of the Dayton Audio Sub 1500. Even with the recent price increase, still around $300 is relatively inexpensive. It does include a 15 inch driver, has a class AB amp, even though it's not 150 watts, has an auto own feature, which saves your power electricity if it's not being used, also has high level input and output, and I would consider it a movie subwoofer because it didn't do great with music. Things that could be better, obviously, the 70 watt amp is not 150 watts. The attached power cord, if something happens to it, it's not removable like the one in the Rockville we showed before. There's no threaded inserts for the 15 inch sub that doesn't matter for most people, but it was an area distinction between the Rockville and this sub. Also, limited bass below 30 hertz, and it's okay, but not great with music. Now, I did reach out to Dayton Audio about the amplifier and the power ratings. Did not receive a response yet, but if I do receive one, I will leave it in the pinned comment below. So making review of a 15 inch powered home theater subwoofer that only costs $300, you can't expect a whole lot. But to be honest, the $230 Rockville Rock Shaker 15 beats this Dayton sub in almost every aspect. And as you guys requested, I did get the $230 Acoustic Audio by Goldwood 15 inch sub. And maybe in a future video, we'll be able to compare all three with in-room and SPL measurements. If you wanna see that, make sure you smash me a thumbs up. Let me know below. And those who stuck around to the very end, we'll see the 2.67 ohm test here. First certified to 1% distortion, we get 72 watts, 2.67 ohms. Next, we'll reset the dyno for the uncertified test, which takes us up to the clipping point. What can we get? And we get 92 watts, 2.67 ohms. And finally, we reset the dyno for the dynamic track, sending a pulse tone of 40 hertz into the amp. Can we bust 100 watts? No, <laughs> we're right at it. 99 watts. Yes, we did. 102. Thanks so much for watching. Next time, Big D, I'm out of here.